Okay, in this video, we are gonna cover the remaining nervous system medications. If you are following along with cards, I'm on card 86 in our Pharmacology Flashcards Edition 2.0. In this video, we will be covering anti-seizure medications, medications for insomnia, as well as sedative hypnotic medications, and then general anesthetic agents as well. All right, let's talk about anti-seizure medications. There are many anti-seizure medications out there. I've chosen four of what I feel like are the most common and more important ones to know to include here on card 86. So those are phenytoin, as well as topiramate, levoteracetam, and primadone. So let's go through some of the common side effects as well as key points regarding administration of these medications. For phenytoin, a key side effect that you definitely have to know is gingival hyperplasia. So that is basically an overgrowth of gum tissue. The gums become enlarged. Other side effects include vision issues, dizziness, GI upset, as well as a possible rash. So when a patient is on phenytoin, we are gonna need them to come in for frequent blood draws because the therapeutic range for phenytoin is pretty narrow and it's hard to hit it just right with the dose. We don't wanna to be too high because we'll have toxicity and we don't wanna to be too low because it won't be effective. So we're gonna need those blood draws pretty frequently to get the dose just right. We want the level to be between 10 and 20 micrograms per milliliter. Then with topiramate, topiramate can cause side effects such as vision issues, dizziness and sedation, as well as metabolic acidosis. Because of that side effect of metabolic acidosis, we're going to want to monitor the patient's bicarbonate levels during therapy. Then with levoteracetam, this can cause behavioral abnormalities as well as fatigue and agranulocytosis. So agranulocytosis means it basically causes white blood cell counts to drop, which in turn places the patient at high risk for infection. So we're definitely gonna to want to monitor the patient's CBC levels and monitor them for signs of infection. And then lastly, with primadone. Primadone has side effects such as drowsiness, GI upset, as well as blood dyscrasias. So with primadone, this actually has a very narrow therapeutic range as well, just like we had with phenytoin. So again, our patient is going to have to go get frequent blood draws to make sure our dose is just right and within the proper range, which is between five and 12 micrograms per milliliter. All right, now let's talk about medications that are used for insomnia. Medications that fall within this class include Zolpidem, which is Ambien, and Azopiclone, which is Lunesta. These medications both work by increasing GABA in the central nervous system, which helps to promote sedation and sleep. So the way I remember these medications is that they both contain Zs. So Zolpidem and Azopiclone can help you catch some Zs. Side effects with both of these medications include daytime sleepiness, which is very common, as well as dizziness, and then possible abnormal thinking and behavior. So these medications actually carry a black box warning because of the possibility for abnormal thinking and behavior. So some patient teaching you'll want to do, you really want your patient to allow for at least eight hours for sleep each night. Also, melatonin is another supplement that can be used to help regulate the sleep-wake cycle and may be effective for the patient as well who is dealing with insomnia. All right, now let's talk about barbiturates. Barbiturates are sedative hypnotic agents, and the key medication to know within this class is pentobarbital. Pentobarbital can be used for preoperative sedation as well as in the treatment of seizures. It can also help to induce a coma in a patient who has high intracranial pressure. It works by increasing GABA, which results in central nervous system depression. Side effects include lethargy, hypotension, respiratory depression, 
as well as constipation. The way I remember this medication is that I climbed over some barbed wire to get into the Pentagon and the Secret Service came and knocked me out with some pentobarbital and took me to jail. So obviously it didn't happen, but that's my little story on how I remember pentobarbital. So if your patient is on pentobarbital, you definitely want to closely monitor their vital signs and you want to make sure that there is resuscitation equipment available at the bedside. All right, the last nervous system medication that I'm going to go over is a general anesthetic agent, which is propofol. Some of you may remember propofol because Michael Jackson used that in conjunction with some benzodiazepines and that resulted in his death. Propofol is used in the induction and maintenance of general anesthesia. It also provides sedation for intubated patients. The mode of action of propofol is to potentiate the effect of GABA and it results in side effects such as amnesia, bradycardia, hypotension, and respiratory depression. So it brings everything down. When you are administering propofol to your patient, you're going to want to continuously monitor their vital signs. Also keep in mind that propofol does not um, treat pain, right? It has no analgesic effect. And then the other thing you, you need to keep in mind is that you need to use unused portions of propofol within six hours because of the risk of bacterial contamination with this medicine. My way of remembering propofol, it starts with that P-R-O-P -P, or like prop. So if you are given propofol, someone will have to prop you up because you will be knocked out. So hopefully that's helpful for you. That wraps up our nervous system medications. And in my next video, we will start in on musculoskeletal medications. Thanks so much for watching.